Okay, in this tutorial we'll be looking at the MAT0102 results submission tool. Um, so this tutorial assumes that you've got all the files in the right place in the same folder as this tool and it's the correct files that you uh, need to use for your building designs and, and options appraised. So I'll just jump right in and start uh, showing some of the features. So first of all it's important to select the building type um, so in this case we'll go for offices I'll be generally working downward through the form filling in the yellow boxes which are the ones that require user input um, and then explaining each item as we go along so selecting offices first of all means that the tool knows uh, which benchmark to use uh, which is coming up a little bit lower down um, and indeed whether or not benchmarks are actually possible for the building use type so that's that's that one completed so now the tool knows that the next uh, question is to do with uh, if the tool is a uh, part new build part refurbishment or defined as a simple building I'll just zoom in on these so that it's uh, easier to, to read there we go um, so we'll say no again this is to do with letting the tool know if uh, benchmarking is is uh, possible or not so I'll put no uh, and then the next question is on the functional quantity uh, the first functional quantity uh, so in this case it's telling you that it should be meters squared net internal area so that's uh, a figure that's uh, typically available um, as perhaps part of the client's brief or something that can be measured on the current design so I'll enter for this just for testing purposes or to demonstrate it 1000 and you'll notice as soon as I put that in it has started to populate and bring in the information from the uh, data files the option data files um, before I put that in it wasn't possible for it to do that so now that's happened uh, the second one is another question on functional quantity which for this building type isn't used but for example it could be something like number of pupils in the school or uh, that kind of uh, different way of measuring the uh, what, how much function is being provided by the building but uh, for this example uh, we, we don't need to complete that one Okay, the next question here is uh, has the Breen benchmark uh, been used as a comparison at concept design and for office buildings that would need to be answered would, the answer is yes so you'd be selecting the tool that you've used for that comparison um, if I was for example not to select one so effectively saying that a comparison to benchmark hasn't been done and just the next one down is if you've done, op if you've done an option appraisal then it gives a warning that you do need to do a comparison with the Breen benchmark for this building use type uh, and generally the tool works in this way so that if an answer is given uh, that, that's not correct then it will give a, a warning and explain why and tell you what you need to do and then you can see these red squares have appeared uh, and then the tool count, counts how many of these there are up here at the top and um, you know, it wouldn't allow the form to be uh, accepted it's quite clear to anyone looking at this that, that there's some errors on there so that's the idea there is to simplify the process of um, understanding if the form's been completed properly or not so I'll just delete that one for now and go in here and select that for example we've used the Bream simplified building LCA tool uh, and possibly that's all that may have happened at concept design stage and if it is and if no options have been appraised I can select no for all of these questions on uh, whether or not uh, option appraisal has been done for superstructure substructure and core building services which are the different uh, parts you can see in the technical manual put no for these 
and so you can see all the reds have gone there's still a few more to complete lower down so it's it's done the comparison of the benchmark here so it's pulled through the benchmark it's compared the performance of this building to the benchmark uh, as a percentage better than the benchmark in this case 69 percent better than the benchmark which is uh, pretty good so therefore it's given a uh, credit award of two I have to say these um, values are from files which contain just uh, random data that's not no not meant to be a, a complete or a full, full building LCA behind there it's just to demonstrate the tool um, just to show that that's that's the way that works and then if uh, if you if you hadn't done option appraisal uh, then this would all still be showing blank information if it's using the blank option data file same for this this would all be blank but it is populated because I'm going to go on and explain about those two items in a moment but just imagine if these were blank and then we get to the bottom of the form and say and answer these questions here just zoom in a bit here so this is what you fill in just before submission so you're just confirming uh, that these various things have been uh, looked at and included in the submission so clearly you're going to say that this file is included in the submission um, and that the all the data files that uh, all the option data files will be included as well in the submission uh, by submission I mean uploading to Breen projects in the, in the relevant part of Breen projects uh, and that the um, method of submission to Bream, as, as I've just said, is to upload to Bream projects um, and that the what's being submitted may be checked, may not be checked by Bream um, and it may not be checked or it may be checked also uh, at QA stage too much later in the process so we're just saying that we're, we're not checking every single submission so the assessor is responsible for making sure that the submission is correct. And then lastly, the date has to be entered, uh, just to say the date that the submission has been made. Uh, so in this case, it's the 8th of May 2018. And so now the that final red is gone. Nothing showing up here at the top. So that form, this file, and all the data files are now ready to go to um, to be uploaded to Bream projects for the concept design stage but as I said we will look at the other parts here as well so let's say for example we have done option appraisal at superstructure stage like this um, and you have to select a tool to use well, I should have pointed out that there is a hyperlink here to the list of tools that are possible to use. I'll just go through that now. So let's just have a look at that form. So this is the form of tools that can be used. Uh, so these are the names of the tools and the version number. So it's important with these. some of these tools have got lots of different versions that the correct version is, is used for, for doing the uh, the new construction 2018 work so that's what needs to be followed here and then it tells you uh, whether or not it what kinds of uh, indicators environmental indicators the tool can do and whether or not the tool is capped so for example the Bream simplified tool is capped which is shown here um, the other tools listed have no cap and they show CO2E and other environmental indicators so there's no, no cap on any of those tools. Then it goes working across the table it goes on to say whether or not the tool is suitable for superstructure and they all will be or else they wouldn't be they wouldn't be recognized at all and then the next question you will get some tools which are suitable for substructure and how landscaping and other tools like the simplify which, which aren't uh, then you have the um, question on whether or not building services can be 
uh, done with the tool. Um, so this is exemplar credit. So more tools are, are uh, going to be saying no, they can't be used for building services. Some tools um, clearly here show that they can be. Uh, and then the next question is on whether or not the tool is suitable for looking at um, option appraisal or superstructure at the technical design stage. This was all concept design. And again, some tools can, can, some tools can't. The, it's important to note that if you're not planning to go for building services, for example, um, then it doesn't matter that the tool can't can't be used for it. So that's something to bear in mind uh, when when deciding what tool to use. And then the last two columns. So this column here is just indicating if the tool is impact compliant, and that means basically can it be used for doing the benchmarking. So the Bream Simplify tool can be used for benchmarking. So can these two impact compliant ones. Uh, they can also be used for option appraisal at different stages too, as can the simplified tool be used for option appraisal at superstructure uh, concept design stage. And then lastly, the column here shows that which uh, indicators are used for making comparisons. So uh, impact compliant tools will be using eco points. Um, other tools are likely to be using uh, kilogram CO2e instead. So they're, they're simply looking at carbon rather than a mixture of indicators or mixture of environmental um, impacts that the eco points can deal with. Okay, so that's choosing a tool. So let's say I'm going to pick for this one uh, simplified building LCA tool again for option appraisal. So I'll return to, the, to that sheet. Generally in the tool there are links to the sheets back and forward between sheets you don't need to use the tabs which um, there's several of so they go off the side of the choices there okay so I'll select the one I just mentioned the simplified tool and here it's uh, telling you the details about the tool which we've just been through in these boxes here okay so now that I've done that, it's uh, clearly saying that I need to do some some work on this section. So I need to uh, fill in these boxes here, as it says. So I'll just say that uh, yes, the uh, that option has been completed, the option data file has been completed, and the description of of the changes sheet. So. That is a sheet linked over over here, um, which uh, for this first option wouldn't be relevant because it's the changes sheet is talking about what changes have been made compared to option one. So we'll just leave that and then I'll do a yes here and then link through to the that sheet. So in this sheet you type in the differences that that have been made between the different options. So let's say, for example, option one, ID one, had uh, brick facade, brick and block facade on the east found uh, east um, facade. Uh, perhaps option two has a timber um, based uh, option. Just to, so the idea is you'd be looking at what difference that makes to the impact. So it could be a, a natural stone face facade or or um, some other significant uh, different type of design, uh, which is which is explained in the technical manual. What we mean by significant uh, changes or differences. So let's just say this is just very uh, just for just for demonstrating that the east facade. Change from brick and block to timber frame and timber cladding. System. Uh, 
you you may ex- you may uh, need to put in more detail than that in in real life, but that's just to show uh, the example here. And if you, you it's good to itemize the different. So it's, if there were several changes, um, to the, not just one change, then you can you can list more changes and put in the uh, uh, you know uh, identifier here. So change two, for example, would be the next one. Uh, so that's that's a change to the frame. It could have been a change to the upper floor, roof, stairs, external walls, etc. So you're simply listing the differences that occur here. And this is done for each of the different options um, that, that are in that table. And so you can see that the this is ID3, which is the third one, fourth one, and so on. So that's the that's the idea you're filling in the differences. So it could be that, for example, that ID two looks at this change, and ID three may look at a change to the upper floors. From this is all compared to option one, as it says here. Or it could be that it's a cumulative. So if you include this change uh, in there, plus a uh, change change up the floor from uh, in situ floor to uh, precast let's say just an example so you, you can have cumulative or you can have one change per option that's up to the design team based on what options they think are uh, suitable for their project, uh, but also fulfill the needs of a significant change. You couldn't just put in something like change the the uh, the colour of the paint on the facade from red to green or something that would that wouldn't be uh, significant. So just returning back to the main sheet here. So I put a yes in. Well, uh, put the yeses in these, which would have would have to be filled out too, and then this this uh, column here is just saying. I'll just zoom in so we can see that more clearly. Uh, selecting uh, why the option has been chosen or hasn't been chosen. So there's a number of possibilities here, uh, which I won't read out, but they're hopefully self-explanatory. Uh, so you just pick the one that's that's the most, that's the closest to the reason why um, it you, it was it wasn't chosen. Uh, it's important to notice this one here, chosen option. So if I put in, for example, just at random some of these for the other ones. So if I don't put a chosen option down, it will tell you that you need to select a chosen option. So let's say I choose that one as the chosen option. Uh, and now it's saying that the chosen option doesn't match the comparison with the benchmark one. So let's just have a look and see what's happened there. OK, so here we've got, you can see uh, straight away that the uh, result here for the eco points uh, per square meter is 0 0.75 but up here it's 0 0.74 which happens to be the same as that one and the reason for this is because the comparison with the benchmark has to be done on the option that's going forward that's been selected uh, there would be no point in doing comparison with the benchmark on on an option that's not being taken forward so it's just saying that you know that the Chosen option here is not the same as as the option here, which is which should be identical to the chosen option. So that's clearly a mistake. I'll change that. It's telling us that only one can be selected. So just another warning there. So I'll change that back. And there we go. That's cleared that that error there. And then down here, the um, it's just asking the question just to confirm that option ID1 is the same as ID B1, the comparison of the benchmark up here. So although it can spot that the numbers are different, it just wants a confirmation that 
they are indeed the same so I'll press a yes and there it's generated the uh, it's, it's calculated number of options that have been appraised one two three four and it's given a, a score it could be that uh, less than four options were done so just to simulate that I'll put no that option wasn't done like so just to do these what needed uh, and therefore it's now showing the two options have been appraised and as such the credit award has been reduced. Uh, now you might notice that it's not a full credit. Um, I'll just put these back to four to show that as well. Uh, and the, the credit is partly because of the number of options, but in this case we've got four, but also because of uh, the uh, cap, the cap I mentioned on this particular simplified tool, which is simple to use, not so much information has to be put in, uh, less time spent on it, and less uh, robust results coming from it. So, therefore, that result has been capped compared to a full LCA tool. Um, and you could say, well, is there a point of, of doing option appraisal then for this tool? Uh, well, the answer is yes, I'd say most of the time, because you won't normally get a full two credits unless you're doing very well for option uh, for comparison with the benchmark. So if that number was, if the result here was, was higher and you're only getting, say, 1.2 credits, uh, then if you add the two together, you would end up with two credits. So uh, there are plenty of cases where being able to do option appraisal even using the cat uh, and a cap tool will be beneficial and worthwhile. Um, so let's say for example we used a different kind of tool here. Just explore that, that idea a bit further. So because the tool isn't capped in this case We've got two, still got the two for comparison with the benchmark, which has been done with the simplified tool. Uh, but we've switched to a, a different tool, which isn't capped, and so we've got more credits here. <clears throat> and then the total uh, amounts to four credits. Uh, another item here to show is that if we were to use a impact compliant tool for this it does give a warning that the tool can also be used for comparison with the benchmark and that you should be using one for both it'd be uh, slightly odd not to anyway to <clears throat> repeat the same information in both tools so if I was to change that to so that they match uh, that's cleared that that error there and again, the same, there's been no cap on that score, so four credits coming through. So there, that's, a, that's a superstructure option appraisal completed. Uh, there's some other things here to, to pay attention to. So obviously you can see the results for each, um, each of the options broken down according to these uh, elemental category types frame, upper floor roof, etc. and then a table down here. So you can see at a glance the differences in the uh, the options and how they compare. But you can also click on these links here which will take you through to the option data file that, that's being brought through for that one. But this, this just allows you to explore that option in more detail, make sure that it's it is what's what you understand the um, design to, to be uh, has been modelled and is coming through in the results. So we'll just close that. Okay, so now we'll move on to substructure and it, it does get quite similar now, so in the way this all works. So if I change this to a yes up here and move on down to the substructure section and it's giving similar warnings just because nothing's been completed yet um, just to show you that if you 
select a tool that's um, not suitable. Uh, check we've already been through that warning before. It will tell you that the tool is not suitable for for this particular for a substructure. We'll just put that back. Okay, so just completing these again. So you also need your first uh, option for both substructure and hard landscaping. We'll leave those for the time being. And let's say you've done some substructure uh, options and explained why some have been chosen some haven't okay so it's still not allowing this one to be removed um, because you must have at least two substructure at least two hard landscaping but at the moment there's only one hard landscaping so we've been away and come back and having done a hard landscaping uh, building LCA work uh, still not working because it's uh, have still haven't chosen a hard landscaping one. So let's put in one more, choose an option. So that's cleared that that fault. Okay, so that's all been completed, and um, it shows here what you've selected for for the two of them and the single credit award. Uh, there's no um, ability to have fractions of credits here it's either you achieve that one credit or you don't so for example you could just you know, if you have one of one set of these missing uh, you, you won't get the credit it is possible to you could have more substructure and hard landscape as long as you've got two or vice versa and you still achieve that credit so that's all links through to the files again as before for checking those and links through to the um, explaining the what the differences are as before with superstructure so uh, here it's um, pulling through from that table what the um, whether it's substructure or hard landscaping for each particular um, option ID and again you have to just put in what the difference was compared to uh, the ID that it says there. So in this case, it's ID 5 is the one that you're explaining the difference to. So ID 5 will be the, the first uh, substructure one. And then down here, which was the hard landscaping one, it'll be compared to ID 6. And you're putting in um, the changes and the, and the reason for not choosing it. In, in more detail there. So just to return to that to that one. Okay, moving on to core building services. Uh, so in order to enable that one, there we go. So here again, similar again. However, here it's warning us that the tool is not suitable for core building services option appraisal. I think we'll just go up and check that. Okay, so yeah, I remember from the table that one wasn't suitable for building services. So I'll change it to another one that is suitable. You can see that it's coming through as a yes there. So that's cleared that warning. And here, slightly less complicated than the hard landscaping substructure, we simply have to do three building services options uh, to get the single credit and the same idea of choosing the one that's um, going to go forward so it's cleared those um, the linked files again to through to see the uh, the option data uh, for for checking those and then over here the changes sheet the 
description of change compared with ID 11, which is the first one. Uh, and again, you put in the, the changes as you have done for the uh, superstructure and substructure. And as you can see, the, uh, the credits come through. So now doing quite well. We have five exemplar credits, uh, five, sorry, five credits plus one exemplar credit. And our information here was already completed from earlier on. If it wasn't, it would all be read and that would have to be done. So that's concept design sheet explained. Moving on to technical design. Uh, later on in the in the project's uh, design life. Um, so here we have uh, some similar questions to before. So let's say uh, several months to years or so have gone past since the concept design one was done and there have been some uh, changes to the um, net internal area which is possible. The building may have got bigger or smaller for example since then. So let's say it's, uh, I don't know, 800 instead now. And putting in that is enabled all of these. Uh, and then, well, again, it's asking us uh, which tool has been used in comparison to the benchmarks. So let's put in that one. Uh, we'll come back to that one in a moment. So it's done comparison to the benchmark just as before, exactly the same. So this is a kind of an update uh, now that the building's changed on uh, how the, the comparison to the benchmark stands. So that's uh, that's all that's for. It doesn't mean it's an additional two credits on top of what was achieved for concept design. It's the same two credits, but if you'd done badly, then the two would be reduced. Let's say you've only got 30 square metres. Terrible performance, so therefore it, you've got none. Let's try, say, 600. So in other words, the, the, the impact that's um, associated with that, that, that uh, design is only being shared amongst 600 square meters now floor space so it's come down to 1.9 and let's put it back up to where it was there we go um moving on to option appraisal so they say yes we have done option appraisal there's only superstructure option appraisal at technical design stage so less to fill in is the good news uh, and let's say we're, we're going to use this tool here. So as you can see, it's not necessary to use the same tool as was used last time. Uh, but it will still give you this warning that the t the, if you're using two tools which can be used for, option of, uh, for comparison with the benchmark, uh, it will want you to just select one, and as, as I said before, that would be a bit strange to use two when you already got the information you need here. You wouldn't necessarily need to use this one. It's also saying that the tool use is not the same as concept design stage. It's not necessarily a problem. It is acceptable, um, but you won't necessarily get comparable results. So if I, for example, change this to... Uh, that's all. So this is coming through as um, it's removed that warning because this is CO2E and other environmental indicators and the performer, the unit used for comparison is kilogram CO2E. Uh, and before it was CO2E as well, so that's why that's clear that that warning. But if you change to one that uses something else, such as eco points, it will give you that warning. It's not necessarily a problem, it's just saying don't expect to be able to say uh, before we had 10 and now we've got 15 or 6 and then say and try and make that kind of comparison. It, it just doesn't work. But it's just for simplicity, keep that the same like that. Okay, so 
same as before the uh, results have come through and it's a case of just saying yes again to that the option data file has been completed and the description of the changes sheet has been completed so entering yes for those again the credit award is based on the number of options done and here clearly it says that the uh, we need to select one that's the chosen option and this is the one that's the same 0 0.88 so there we go it's, it's no warnings coming through here uh, just confirming the one that this is the one that, that's uh, being taken forward at technical design stage and that it's uh, it's the same as the one that's submitted for comparison of the benchmark and there we get our three credits so the thing to bear in mind for tech design stage is that the, signif the significant changes uh, definitions in the technical manual are different from concept design stage because the opportunities to make changes at this stage are different you know you, you can't make as many dramatic different uh, options uh, for consideration because there will be a fair amount in the design that, that has been already been decided and fixed and the opportunities for making changes is therefore lesser. So we're looking for more detailed changes such as changes in the products used and so on. Um, so that's that's what you would you would um, explain in, in this, this sheet here what the different changes are that have been put into the options. So here we've got some errors and we have indeed down here we just have to again con confirm that these items are included in the submission as a reminder and that it's been submitted in the correct way and uh, this will have to put in a date but very unlikely a project would be able to do concept design and technical design in one day but uh, We'll put that in nonetheless. Okay, and so clearly now we've got seven credits plus the exemplar uh, because we achieved all of the all of the credits that are possible on concept design and all of the credits possible on technical design, and there we have our score. So that's the uh, that's the that's how you use these two concept design and technical design uh, sheets. Um, the Mat two schedule is is a different issue which is not covered by this tutorial, uh, but is is still included in this in this uh, this tool just to keep everything in one place. There are some other tabs which are useful. This is a tab that explains how uh, you need to structure the files which is actually covered in another one of these tutorials if you're having any issues with that but it is explained in here and all of the other tabs just in case you're wondering are tool recognition tab that we've already looked at uh, this one and all the others they're all linked through from uh, the hyperlinks on the first two tabs so we've seen them all, all of these before so nothing else really to, to look at, schedule of changes. So that's the end of this tutorial.